Okay, let's talk Persia. Um, I know we've been kind of talking about the Greeks a lot, and I know that as someone who is descended from Western Europeans, I'm supposed to think the Greeks are amazing, and they are. But these Persians, pretty cool. So here's a scope here of their Persian Empire um, at its height. Um, so let's kind of get some background here. The Kenamid Empire um, is kind of a joining together of these two, Greek, two groups that we've talked about in the past, as you can see by the dates. And so Cyrus, the Kenamid ruler, um, wanted to create this first empire. And Darius, his grandson, or distant relative, um, also will try to expand this empire both to the east and west, and of course, uh, bring him up against our friends the Greeks. Okay, so here's the Median Empire, right, and then they'll uh, join together. Uh, but let's just jump in here with our main guys, Cyrus the Great. Um, and so, again, sometimes we have to think about what's unusual for the time period, or maybe what we imagine today. But Cyrus was a tolerant ruler, right? Um, you could keep your own uh, cultures, your own institutions. The Greeks called him the lawgiver, and the Jews called him the anointed of the Lord. So uh, remember, way back when we talked about the Hebrews, remember they were, um, uh, the Babylonians had taken them out of um, Jerusalem, right? And Cyrus allowed the Jews to go back to Palestine. And so um, they liked him, needless to say. And here is Cyrus's grave. Um, and so his grandson will just go for easiest convenience, uh, Darius the Great. He's the one that built uh, Persepolis, which will become a great, um, important ceremonial capital of the Persian Empire. And so um, here's how he expanded it. So take a look at this, right? 35 million people over, uh, encompassing over 70 distinct ethnic groups. So this is going to be tricky, and throughout history we'll see how can people can people rule a diverse empire successfully? Um, so all the way to the Aegean, right, that come up against the Greeks, and all the way to the Indus River and the Nile in the south. So pretty amazing. Okay, so we learn, I think, from Darius how to build an empire. And we'll see kind of these common elements as we look at all the great empires in history. <clears throat> so, first you gotta establish a good tax collecting system. And then he divided the empire into districts called satrapies. And so these would be like provinces or maybe even states, say in our country. And then how do you um, go throughout your empire, keep everyone connected? So he built an amazing system, right, called the Royal Road. And he also established a complex postal system, maybe something we would recognize. And of course, you gotta have some good spies, right? To make sure everybody is kind of staying on message. Okay, so the satraps um, were then the governors of these satrapies. And so people could then, oops, do their own thing, right? Kind of minister their local area and then collect the taxes and help administer the whole empire. Um, the governors or the satraps were royal appointees, um, royal family, um, and then they sort of became kind of their own little hereditary domain, so the satrap would then pass it on to his um, son, etc. So this is a way to keep um, the empire running well. Um, also, the standardizing of taxes, right, leads to then a central um, ruler, central organization. So he um, became formalized with the tax levies. Um, each satrapy was required to pay a set quantity, um, even maybe some horses, slaves, coins. And so to do that, right, he standardized coins. That's a little bit easier, right, to collect taxes. Okay, <clears throat> so again, very forward thinking and very good at um, 
organizing this empire. Um, so keeping with this idea of centralization is uh, building Persepolis. And here is an old photograph of some of the ruins that are there. Um, someday I'd like to go there. Soon um, after Darius came to power, right, he centralized his administration. We've been looking at ways he did this. In about 520 BCE, he began to build this capital, and it became kind of the center here of um, the empire. And so uh, we looked at how the satraps, right, or the governors served as agents of the central administration, and this is where kind of everybody came together, right, um, to keep this empire running smoothly. Um, so here are the kind of two capitals, right? So here's Persepolis today in what is Iran. And then here is Susa, right? I think our readings talked about um, this as also kind of another administrative capital of the Persian Empire. So you can see the scope, right, all the way into Egypt and into what is Turkey today. And then, right, and this is where we see the trouble with um, our Greeks. Um, so here's some cool pictures of Persepolis. So maybe another dream field trip destination. Um, and so a little bit more about the Royal Road. Um, here are some details here, and then a map showing the road complex. Um, so caravans took 90 days to travel on foot which seems like a lot, but for that time period, it's pretty awesome. Um, so they had inns along the way. Um, the road was well policed. Um, and so, I mean, this is kind of cool, right? And uh, kind of like the Pony Express, maybe, of the American West, right? That these horses were there so they could go into um, the next route or the next section and notice uh, speaking of the Postal Service, Herodotus, the Greek historian, had this to say about the um, uh, couriers, and then I think our own postal system adapted that. Okay, so um, obviously they were far enough away, some of these local governors, the satraps, could kind of become sort of independent uh, kingdoms. Uh, with their own authority. So Darius had to make sure that there was a check to the satrapy um, or the satrap's power and influence. So he had his own military officers and tax collectors to keep an eye on them. And then, of course, the spies, right, would go out and about and make sure um, that the satraps were kind of on point, right? So even though this was a far-flung empire and a diverse group, um, these are different ways that Darius kept um, power centralized. And one of the more interesting things to me about the Persian Empire is the religion. And um, maybe we should all take world religions class so we can talk more about Zoroastrianism. So this is the religion of the Persian Empire. And it was um, founded by Zoroaster, or as the Greeks would call him, Zarathustra around um, the 6th century BCE. Um, not a lot is known about him. This is kind of an artistic rendering of what he might have looked like. Um, but some historians believe uh, this is the first monotheistic religion, and that when the Jews came into Babylon, right, they were exposed to some of these ideas of uh, good and evil. Um, heaven and hell, and so um, that there's this Messiah or a Savior coming in the future, and that there was this idea of an end of time, right? This cycle that we reach this end point. And so um, a lot of historians think that this, um, these ideas will kind of filter through Judaism and then obviously through Christianity and Islam. And so this is the common symbol of um, Zoroastrianism, and so this concept of the tree of life. So some of these things that have filtered through these religions come here through um, Zoroastrianism. Uh, so Zoroastrian beliefs 
that there is this one true God, Ahura Mazda, known as the Wise Lord, and um, he is also the creative spirit, right, created the earth. And then there's this destructive spirit, Angra Mainu, um, I think, if you remember this from our first quiz and some of our readings, um, that this balance, right, that exists. And so here's the sacred text, um, Avesta, and I guess some symbols that I mentioned earlier, and uh, the sacred fire. And so these, some of these uh, in Zoroastrian temples have burned for thousands of years. Uh, they keep them burning always. And Zoroastrians believe in not polluting, so it's like sandalwood, I think, they burn that doesn't pollute the air. And one thing that I think is interesting are these um, uh, pillars where they would put bodies there of the dead and let then the elements um, take, you know, kind of break down the bodies rather than bury bodies in the earth to pollute the earth. So they're very much connected with nature and not uh, polluting the elements. Anyway, very cool, very interesting. So if you have questions, make sure you ask in class. So um, that is kind of the basics of the Persian Empire, um, kind of just to review what you have already read and then, of course, the religion of the empire.